In 2015, an elite team of software engineers assembled at the headquarters of Sky UK to work on a pivotal, secret new project. To compete with video streaming giants such as Netflix, Sky wanted to expand its online video operations across Europe. In particular, it needed a new state-of-the-art payment system to ensure customers were charged consistently every month. This crack team designed an elegant Java microservice architecture, each service with its own distinct responsibilities. But in 2015, microservices were still catching on. And while the benefits were well known, operationally speaking, managing them was like trying to domesticate a gang of meerkats. While the container technology Docker was already well established, better approach to managing containers was needed to bring microservices into the mainstream. And it just so happens that in 2015, the now famous container orchestration tool Kubernetes had just been released. So a plan was hatched at Sky to spin up a new Kubernetes cluster to host all the new payments microservices. The final big challenge then was how to deploy these microservices into Kubernetes. Thinking of the developer experience first, the team decided the best approach would be by running a Gradle command. The team was split up into several sub-teams, one for each microservice and one for the core platform. The platform team cracked on with developing their Gradle deployment plugin and eventually created something which solved many issues found in microservice environments. Rather than being gatekeepers to production, the platform team wanted to give the individual microservice teams the best tools to make their own decisions about when to deploy. This setup helps development teams avoid deployments being held up on someone external and empowers them to make more frequent iterations. So how exactly did a custom Gradle plugin enable this? There are three main reasons. First, the deployment plugin was a separate project with its own development and release cycle. That meant it could be published standalone to an internal repository and applied within each microservices Gradle build. Next, the plugin created a Gradle task for each target environment. Deploying to Kubernetes was as simple as running a single Gradle task. Finally, the deployment to each environment was completely configurable from the Gradle build script. That meant you could configure properties like the number of replicas to deploy per environment. In test environments, you might only deploy two instances of the microservice, whereas in production, you might need to scale higher. At this point, yours truly joined the team, a complete Gradle beginner who was amazed and very confused by this new deployment mechanism. I knew it was powerful and easy to use, but I just couldn't get to grips with how the plugin worked and how these ninja developers had even written it. Thankfully, after years of persistence, it started to make sense. I even went on to make a similar plugin elsewhere, inspired by my time at Sky. So let's lift the lid on the Gradle deployment plugin, see how it works, and how you could use a similar technique in your own project. To do this, I've created an example repository, linked in the description, with three completely separate Gradle projects. There's microservice A, simulating a service to be deployed, a similar microservice B, and a deployment plugin project. Right now, microservice A and B are simple Java applications which we can run, but they have no deployment mechanism. That's where the deployment plugin project comes in. In its Kotlin build script, it applies the Java Gradle plugin plugin and sets up an ID and implementation class. With this in place, Gradle will be able to publish the plugin properly for other projects to apply. The deployment plugin implementation class is a special class which implements Gradle's plugin interface. When the plugin gets applied to a project, Gradle will call this apply method. Pay attention to the two method calls, register task for environment. These create two new Gradle tasks, one for each environment of QA and prod. The task is of type deployment task, which extends default task. Gradle automatically runs methods annotated with at task action when the task is executed. In this case, the action method simulates deployment by printing a string made up of these properties. So let's try using the plugin, then we'll come back to understand it in some more detail. 
In the settings.gradle.kts file of microservice A, we can use a handy trick to avoid having to publish the plugin code. We use the include build syntax to combine the two builds together, making the plugin available to microservice A. This is useful during development when you're making changes to a standalone plugin which you want to try out immediately in another project. We can now apply the deployment plugin by ID in the build.gradle.kts build script. With just these two minor changes, when we run Gradle W tasks, we have a new group of deployment tasks listed. And when we run those tasks, it prints out the string we saw a moment ago. Notice how it always deploys just one replica though. That's the default value, but it's entirely configurable. To understand how, let's jump back to the deployment plugin project and take a look at the deployment plugin extension class. In Gradle, if you want to extend the default build script DSL, you register what's known as an extension object. This class represents that object and it can contain properties and even other objects entirely. In this case, we have two variables, QA and prod, of type environment. An environment is a class with a configurable replicas property, describing the number of instances of the microservice that we want to deploy. In the constructor, you can see the default value of replicas is set to 1, which we saw in the task output a moment ago. Back in the plugin class, the first thing that happens in the apply method is the extension is created with a specific name. From the extension, we can get the configuration matching either QA or prod. When that's passed through to the register task for environment method, we can get the number of replicas and pass it through to our task. So now in microservice A's build script, let's configure the plugin. We do that by calling deployment, which is the extension name, then configuring QA or prod or both for a specific number of replicas. And now when we run the same tasks, it deploys the newly configured number of replicas. Let's carry out the same procedure in microservice B. Include the plugin build in settings.gradle.kts. Apply the plugin in build.gradle.kts. Configure the plugin extension, this time with slightly higher values because microservice B is a bit of a beast. And now we can just as easily run deployments from microservice B. Of course, you'll want to substitute in whatever deployment mechanism you're using. For us at Sky, that was interacting directly with the Kubernetes command line client, kubectl. But an even more robust approach would be to interact with a Java client API if it's available. One thing you don't want to forget when creating a plugin is to create your tasks properly to make them discoverable. If you don't do that, developers won't know what tasks to run. So you need to watch this video right here to learn how to set up a task group in description.